All right, let's talk about customer service. There's a there's a memorable scene in this classic Wizard of Oz movie where uh, Glenda the Good Witch, the Good Witch. <laughs> That's an awesome other run for you. <laughs> anyway, Glenda the Good Witch, she implored Dorothy to click her heels together and she could get what she's been missing all along. She said, Dorothy, look down at your feet. Dorothy had on these bad uh, red ruby slippers. Now she had to kill this, this witch's bad sister to get the slippers. And this, these movies, <laughs> there's a lot of murder and misogyny and all kind of craziness going on. Anyway, so Dorothy had to go out and kill somebody. <laughs> this sounds crazy. But Dorothy had to go out and literally kill somebody to get the get to back to Kansas when she had the gift all along, according to this witch. I guess I'm telling the story right. It's been a long time. I'm so I was so shaken by those monkeys flying. I just couldn't focus on much else. But I know many of you all out there too. Those monkeys caused many kids. <laughs> they have nightmares. But anyway, back to the story. Um and the bottom line is that many of us are also so busy chasing this wizard of Oz that we're not looking at the gifts that we have at our disposal. One gift that's available to everybody. And that is the gift of customer service, good service. Not just regular customer service. I'm talking about that service that make people call you Santa Claus, make you make you wow people. So I'll say good morning to Gracie. Thank you for tuning in this morning, Gracie, down in North Carolina. Thank you for so much for tuning in. Um, so let's take some of this money and other resources that we're giving to these, these so-called wizards and gurus and rechannel it into our customer service. I, when I first came to this DC area, and this, was, this really was a, a, a defining moment in my life. I came to the DC area and people kept telling me about Nordstrom's. They said, there's this company in town. It's, it's like a Woolworths. We're from down south, so we call them Woolworths and Belts. But up here, it was called Nordstrom's and Macy's and Wool, what's that place? Uh, Woodruff and Lothrop's and places like that, but Nordstrom's. And they said, this place, you can wear your shoes. You can wear a hole in the bottom of the shoes and you can take them back and exchange them. I'm like, man, what's not to like about that? <laughs> I mean, it seems a little um, extreme. Seems like it would be fraught with abuse, but it left an impression on me. So I went in there and bought me some shoes. Now I'm wearing these shoes. I'm waiting to wear the hole in the bottom so I could take them back, but I never did. And I think, I think Nostrum knew that, that most people are not going to bring those shoes back after wearing them for a few years, but they put it out there. And I said, that's the kind of company I want to be. I'm not going to sell shoes, and I hope folks don't take advantage of it, but that's the kind of company I want to be. I want to strive to be. So if when you embrace this phenomenal customer service, you start to look at things differently. You're not arguing with people over pennies. You're not arguing with people over refunds. You're not constantly looking over your shoulder that somebody's going to take advantage of you. Your whole mindset changes. All this time you're trying to argue with the customer to make sure that they don't take advantage of you and that you're right and they're wrong. Man, you're just better off just giving them another one and moving on. You have better things to do, bigger fish to fry. And let me tell you about a thing called Goodwill. That's one of your company's most valuable assets. It's not your trucks. <laughs> it's not your bank account. It's not your inventory. One of your most valuable assets is this thing called goodwill. It's something you acquire over providing years of good service. Why squander that over a few bucks? It goes back to our earlier comments about being penny wise and pound foolish. Branding, being a sheep, penny pitching company is not a good look. 
I'm telling you, folks, this is one of my secret sauces of marketing. I'm not going to argue with you because I got other things to do. I'm not going to be penny wise and pound foolish. I would rather see you on your way than to sit there and spend the rest of the year fooling around with a disgruntled customer. And think about stakeholder relationships. By giving good service, you are nurturing and building one of your most precious stakeholders, and that's your customers and clients. I'm telling you, your customers and clients, that's one of your biggest, biggest and most valuable stakeholders. But because of how you handled it and because of the mindset and the goodwill and brand that you put out there, you started to attract. If anybody here believes in the law of attraction, you start to attract other companies of like minds to be other stakeholders, such as joint venturers, such as partners, such as clients, such as vendors, such as suppliers, such as staff. If they start to see your company and your brand in a positive light, because you don't have a lot of crap out here about you taking folks money and not giving them the refund that they requested, or it attracts positive influences and it's going to increase your, the trajectory of your company. You have to be aware of something called lifetime value. Every customer that comes in the door, and when I say customer, I'm going to say this quickly. I want you to own those customers. I mean, they're like a slave. You're going to put a chain around them and walk them down the street. But you have to embark on customer ownership. You want them to be with you forever. That's why I'm not taking new clients. I have enough because the ones that I have, we have a, a mutual understanding. I'm not going anywhere. And they say they're not going anywhere because they know they're going to get great service. So I'm not out here spending money constantly bringing new customers because my attrition rate is low. So think ROI, return on investment. Every customer has a cost. And customer service enhances the return on that investment. If you're not getting recurring sales, you're going to go out of business. If you're getting one-offs, somebody ordering from you one time and then they're going on down the street, I'm just going to sit here and count the days. Matter of fact, the hours. All right, let's give them another week. They'll be out of business because you're not embracing customer service. You have that short-sighted, penny-wise, penny wise and pound foolish mentality. And let me tell you something else. Let's take it away from the customer service for a minute. Let's talk about you personally. Now, I don't like stress. I don't like fighting people. I don't like stuff hanging in the back of my head. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I can't enjoy this good old cup of coffee because I got this lingering mad customer out here. Or, And I'm not so much worried about them being mad, but there's something in my spirit that's unsettled. When I'm out here fighting somebody with a few pennies, it doesn't make any sense. That's being penny wise and pound foolish. Stress kills. <laughs> So why get into that when you can just resolve this and move on? I'm telling you, folks, this will change the trajectory of your business tomorrow. Less stress is best. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. Let me tell you something. People come to me with these little problems. They're like, they're trying to get points, score points. I just sit there and listen to them. Okay. Then I turn around and wow them. And they're sitting there with their mouth open and say, God, I can't believe he did that. Who is this guy? <laughs> I'm not rich. Okay. I mean, from the, I'm not like Bill Gates kind of rich or Oprah kind of rich. I'm rich in other ways. And one of those ways that I'm rich is that I have a spirit that allows me to do things because I believe in reciprocity. I believe that what you give, you get back. And I have never been proven wrong. 
I mean, doesn't care. I mean, okay, let's say, let's just say the Gatewood, all right, man, look, I ain't got, I ain't got the account of bank. I need, I need to get my money back. Well, let's put, let's put it this way. You, you want these folks that's hard to convince. I get that, okay? Like, hey, I'm a dollars and cents man. Debits and credits. I's got to be dotted and T's got to be crossed. Well, let's do this. Fuck it up. Why don't you add that customer service to your business model and let the customer pay for it. And that's what these these high-end, high-value companies do. They give you the service, but you're going to pay for it because they add it to the price. So you can do that. But it can't be the option of to do it or not. Whether you want to do it out of generosity or if you want to add it to the bottom line, do it. I'm telling you, make that a part of your business today. Let me tell you a story that changed my approach to customer service. In addition to the, the Nordstrom story, but there was a uh, lady went to a store. She was having a dinner party. And the main course was going to be, she was going to make some type of chicken casserole or something. So she ordered the chicken. It came to the house. And the day she was about to start the cooking, she opened this chicken. And the thing was foul. It smelled up her entire house. And she said, my goodness, I'm glad I did this the day before. Because otherwise, it would have been a disaster. But I've got this bad chicken on my hand. And my house smells really, really bad. So she called this store and said, look, I'm mad. I want... I need recompense. I need to make this right. I bought a chicken. The chicken is bad. I wasted my money. My house smells horrible. What can you do for me? So the manager was sitting there listening. And he said, I tell you what, ma'am, I am so sorry this happened to you. This is what I'm going to do. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to replace that chicken, not just this chicken, but I'm going to give you free chicken for the rest of the year. Second thing I'm going to do, I'm going to send out a, a cleaning company to fumigate your house to make sure that there's not a set left in that house that reminds you of that foul chicken that you got. And the third thing I'm going to do, I'm going to call that company that sold you that bad chicken and tell them they need to rotate their inventory more often and not to be selling people bad chicken. That's right. Now that is what you call exceptional customer service. This company went through all of that and they weren't even the one that sold her the chicken. <laughs> but guess what? That person had a customer for life and they told everybody. They probably going to tell this story for 100 years. Something like the Nordstrom story. They probably had one person that came back with water shoes out and brought them back. But it's that one story that built that reputation that people are still telling it after all of these years. You need to be that company. Gatewood has decided, my company, I've decided, I'm going to be that type of company. And I'm telling you, if you're in a rut, sales are flat, your company has been in the same place it's been for the last five, six, seven, eight, ten years, nothing going on, adopt this. It works. All right, in closing, don't meet expectations. That's a low bar exceed them. I want you to wow your customers. Make them say, I can't believe he did that. Make them call you Santa Claus like somebody called me the other day. This just happened yesterday. <laughs> they just sent me an email. We had a little discussion on the phone about something. I mean, it, it may have cost her maybe $10 that she didn't want to spend. And I went out and spent probably a couple of hundred bucks to remedy her problem out of my pocket. And she wrote back and said, Santa Claus. I'm going to probably have that customer the rest of my life. Lifetime value. I want you to make your customers afraid for you to leave them. Now, you know you, you've got it going on when you got customers over there scared. They're checking on you. <laughs> because they're afraid you might go somewhere. 
and I want you to leave them talking about you for years to come. Now, you don't need this, this marketing wizard of Oz to find business success, to find it somewhere over the rainbow. You have the answer right here under your nose. You need to click those symbolic ruby slippers together, click three times. It's called customer service. And you have it, and you can do it. Folks, that's going to wrap it up for today.